Okay, hello everybody and welcome to this week's Lunch and Learn. Here's my short disclaimer. I'm an Oracle ACE director. Uh, I'm an authored expert. I've written a lot of books, uh, literally hundreds of articles, uh, published pretty regularly all the time. You can register for these Lunch and Learns at my website, danhotka.com. Uh, and then you'll see also short announcements on what's going on and uh, the, the topics of the day, but also the links for the Lunch and Learn. I do blog regularly for several folks, uh, and uh, you could go to danhotka.blogspot.com, and that'll give you the links. Uh, I'm probably going to blog on the topics of this Lunch and Learn, although this is first, and then the, the, the uh, blogs will come. Training, I do training, on-site, over the web, and self-paced. Uh, on-site, up to 15 people for a flat fee of $3,000, uh, plus the airline ticket. Uh, over the web, up to 25 people for a flat fee, uh, no expenses whatsoever. And, of course, I do have a portable computer lab, so all we need at your site is a room that seats us comfortably. The self-paced videos, I am busy turning my courseware into to videos on Safari books. Okay, um, the Oracle SQL tuning is the first one up there. Um, there will be a whole bunch more. Pretty much the list of the training courses there, most of those will be turned into video at some point during the year. So again, my first video is on Safari books. Uh, you can click here. There's a link that will take you right to it on my website so if you only have one or two people that need training great um, you can you know do what you want with the with the video uh, on site and over the web let me know how I can help okay this week oops not scripting this week is uh, Oracle weight events May is Oracle weight events month and what I've got is a little primer for you on what weight events are uh, next week, we're going to start in with the good, the bad, and the ugly as far as the weight events themselves. Uh, I'm going to discuss a variety of weight events over the course of May, uh, what they mean, um, how you resolve them, and, and what it means basically when they show up, what you can do about it. So we'll have a good conversation on most of these, and I'll fix that scripting tips thing. So today's topic is Oracle weight events. Weight events, basically, when you've asked Oracle to do something, what did you ask Oracle to do? Okay, uh, so when it's when it's doing some work, what kind of work is it doing? Okay, and um, we're going to discuss this during the course of the month, but how do you find them? How do you know what to do about them? And are they a problem? Really, uh, but like I say, Oracle logs all of its time on these events and uh, then then we can determine what we need to do with them. So basically user response time, you got an application out there, you're asking, you know, you're interacting with the database at various points over the over time. As you interact with the database, you're running SQL statements. So SQL statements generate these weight events, okay? And and some some of these are useful ones. Uh, some of these um, are kind of DBA ones, like these two here are more DBA oriented ones, but they do cause us to wait. If, if it, they're holding up applications, there's various things that we can do about those. So they show up in various places. You can set auto trace on statistics, and we can see wait events down here. There's a, there's a few right here in the middle, and then these sorts and stuff. These are all the different wait events that uh, my ABC example made Oracle do. Um, my JS Tuner tool shows the same weight events. By the way, um, watch for JS Tuner update. I've not gotten to the update yet, but I am going to put up another tab on this uh, over here, another tab for current running SQL and current weight events. Okay, so whatever is Oracle's busy doing, you can click on those wait events and see the SQL statement. And then you can, um, like I say, the current running SQL, I'm going to show the wait events 
and the explain plan and gives you all the cool stuff that you need. So you can pick the SQL out of there that you want more information on, and then I'm going to give you the, the same explain plan information. So watch for an announcement on uh, update to JS Tuner. Okay. So here in, in uh, Toad, you right mouse click on your SQL statement, select auto trace, and then it's going to give you a variety of of different things whether it logged any time to it or not it's going to give you a whole bunch of weight events maybe too much information don't know uh, the session browser is another place where you can see current running SQL and what is it doing and this isn't a waiting state this is just waiting for you to do something SQL that's just waiting for some traffic from you but we can see that there's a log file sync in here and like I say during the course of the month we're going to talk about what these are uh, and how you can improve response time what they mean and and how they impact performance trace is a really good place to see weight events um, there's the weight events that are associated with my ABC example okay and here DB file sequential read that's an index scan. We see index scans here. That's the wait event when Oracle is doing single block reads. Okay, and we're going to talk about this. I'm going to start with the physical reads and writes uh, next week. We'll talk about DB file sequential read and DB file um, the other one. Um, gosh, brain fart. Sorry. Uh, DB file uh, when you're doing full table scans. So. They appear all over the place. These weight events appear all over the place. There's a V-dollar table that works with them. And here is the all of the different events. You can see all the different events. And if you look at the data, you will see all the different times. Now, the problem with weight events uh, and performance is you have to associate a time with them. Oracle logs time to these, uh, to V-dollar system event logs time to this from the time the Oracle instance was started up. So just looking at this and looking at the top weight events in this list really have no meaning. You really need to associate time with this. I'm going to back up a slide. That's what these various tools do. Um, AWR and Stats Pack are a way of associating time with the weight events. Of course, a SQL trace has a time associated with it. You ran it either for a SQL single SQL statement or for a process that has a bunch of SQL statements in it but a definite a, a definite uh, uh, time frame so all right here's uh, the V dollar system event here's here's some of the different things that are in there again and look at the total weights total timeout of course you would want to order by this one see what the top ones were but again this information is rather useless uh, until you've associated time with it, a time frame, a begin and an end. Um, the Oracle was busy between 10 and 11 in the morning. It was things seemed to be kind of slow. What was Oracle busy doing? That's why you need Stats Pack or AWR to take a look and see what weight events were going on, what was Oracle busy doing, and then uh, there's ways to drill down to the SQL statement, and hopefully my JS Tuner tool will make that easier for you. Some useful views. This is the one that's that's really useful. Now you can see the different weight events. These are some AWR tables. You have to have, I believe you have to purchase the diagnostics pack to be able to use these even though the information is collected. But let's look at the V$ dollar system event. Um, all of the events have three parameters, P1, P2, and P3. P1 and P2, when you're working with physical I.O., type of um, operations. You got um, events that are throwing, um, uh, that are dealing with the disk drives, dealing with the table spaces. They'll have a, the P1 is the file number and the P2 is the block number. Okay, Oracle lays itself out very nicely on disk. Uh, the table spaces have a definite block size. The file number, um, you, you can look in DBA under bar data files and get the name associated with any number, the data file name. The P2 is the block number. That's the offset from the beginning of the file. So if you're going to be doing dumps. But more importantly, you can use P1 and P2 and go into yet another view and find the objects involved. Okay. So here's P1 and P2. Here's, here's that V$ system event. And again, 
Um, the time involved, really, this is just showing us the different types of events. And this showed up in Oracle 11, by the way. Oracle 11 finally documented these events and told us what are, when you've got, there's DB file sequential read, DB file scattered read. That's the other one I was trying to think of. These are the two I'm going to cover next week. Okay. So when you're dealing with this, this data file stuff, P1 and P2, file number and block number. And then P3 is always how much of it occurred. Okay. Log file sync. You can see which buffer was was uh, syncing, so it gives you a lot of useful information um, about what P1 and P2, and what the parameters mean. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and I probably left a slide out of this, is you take the P1 and the P2 and you go to DBA underbar segments. I'm going to back up a couple of slides, one slide. You go to DBA under bar segments. You take the file number and the block number, and it's going to tell you the name of the table, the name of the index, whatever the object is that's causing this. Okay? And then we're going to talk about how you trace that back. Um, that's something else I'm going to make a note of here as soon as we're done. Um, I'm going to show you how you can trace these uh, back to the actual SQL statements. And again, Watch for updates to my JS Tuner tool. I'm going to make it work with these things as well. So we have talked about some weight events. I've given you the background on what weight events are. We talked about P1, P2. We talked about how the Oracle weight events is when you've asked Oracle to do some work. You've submitted a SQL statement. Uh, what work did you ask Oracle to do? And then, of course, what problems has this caused from a performance point of view? We're going to talk about these things over the course of the month. So check in next week where we will talk about um, DB file scattered read and DB file sequential read, uh, the caveats, the good, the bad, and the ugly with those two events. Let your friends know about this. Thank you for joining me today and remember me for your training needs. Thank you.